friends, thank you for joining me today. Um, in this video, I'm gonna be doing a full face of new Makeup Revolution products, mostly new. I mean, I am gonna have to fill in the blanks here and there with some things that you've seen me use before, but I've got like a new eyeshadow palette I wanna use, some new cheek products, also a new foundation. And I actually placed an order on the Makeup Revolution website, the USA website, so I could get this stuff because some of these are things I wasn't seeing yet on Ulta's website. But Ulta's site is where I usually buy a lot of Revolution stuff. If you're not familiar with this brand, I will definitely link below to other stuff that I've done on Makeup Revolution, but it's a very affordable brand. For individual products, it's definitely along the lines of a drugstore price range brand. And really, I guess with their palettes too, because I mean, you look at Milani, they're charging $20 for an eyeshadow palette. From Makeup Revolution, they've done some really great $7 palettes, you know, that have even more shades. So it's a fun brand to haul. It's fun to try a a lot of things from because you're not really breaking the bank in doing so. So I've already got my skin all moisturized and ready to go. And the first thing I'm gonna pop on is my Fast Base Stick Foundation. I have this here in the shade F7. And you guys, I've been playing with a lot of foundation sticks lately. I feel like every other video I get on here, I say I've been testing foundation sticks, but there will be a video coming really breaking down the different kinds of foundation sticks that are out there because there really is a lot of variety. This stick would probably be one of the most hydrating feeling ones that I own right now. As you glide it across the skin, it is super creamy. And this is kind of a good news, bad news situation, depending on your skin type, right? Because if you've got really dry skin, this may be just like a perfect thing to mesh in with your skin and not cling to dry patches. However, if you've got oily skin or even normal skin like me, I feel like this has a tendency of breaking down kind of quick. So to combat that, I do make sure that I set this with powder like pretty much all over the face not just my little T-zone area, but all over for the best staying power. But as you can see, I just kind of mark it up all over my face. And then this is my uh, foundation brush of choice these days. It's the Pro Mini Flawless Airbrush from Sephora. This is the VIB Rouge. If you're wondering why this is red, I got it as like a rouge perk, but there is just a regular brush like this that's black. Anybody can order it. And it's just an amazing size. I love doing concealer with it. I like doing foundation with it. But do you see the coverage here? I mean, it's wonderful coverage and you can almost see that little bit of uh, dewiness coming off of the skin. That's not because of any shimmer in this product. This is not a shimmery product. It's just the texture of the product that's offering some moisture to the skin. So again, the different skin types should really be aware of that and know that if you are the least bit oily in any way, you really will wanna set this for the best staying power. And because it doesn't look dry and cakey, like I can get away with putting a decent amount of powder on top of this and it's not going to look like too much. But regardless of doing that, this is probably not the foundation I'm gonna reach for on the hottest, most humid summer day and I know I'm gonna be going to an outdoor concert. Like this just isn't gonna be my pick under those circumstances. But what you do get from this, which is kind of unique for the fact that it's not like a thick dry stick, it's really kind of surprising that you can get truly full coverage with this. I mean, I'm not seeing melasma. You could use this as concealer. And that's an area where I guess I haven't really explored just using this as a concealer, but it could do the job, you know, and it would be a really nice texture for under eye concealer. But it's really covering up everywhere I need it to be. What I might do is just add a little extra concealer right in here. Now this is a concealer I've talked about a lot on my channel. I think it's one of the best drugstore concealers. It's Conceal and Define. I use this in the shade C5 and I remember when I first got it, I was a shade too light and I didn't feel like the coverage was as good. And then when I settled in on the perfect shade, I was like, okay, this is totally able to cover it all. When this came out, a lot of people were making comparisons to, I'm gonna go around a little redness on my nose too. A lot of people were comparing it to shape tape and I feel like it's not quite quite as potent as shape tape. You need to use a little more of this to get to that shape tape level coverage. It's also not quite as drying on the skin as shape tape can be, but it does offer a really nice level of coverage. As you can see, this shade is just right and I'm just dabbing over it with my brush right into the innermost corner. And my melasma area, I mean, I don't even have to add anything extra because the foundation stick pretty much tackled that. 
Now for my powder, um, I don't have any like brand spanking new powders from Makeup Revolution, but I do have the two that I've had on hand for a little while here. I've got the Luxury Baking Powder in Ghost and Lace. These are kind of like um, Makeup Revolution's take on a Ben Nye type uh, setting powder. And I think I will use a little bit of the Ghost just on the under eye area. And this is, you know, a translucent powder. It appears to be white. You can definitely overuse something like this and look a little cakey on the skin just because it is a white powder but with a minimal amount on a brush it works well for just not deepening any areas of your makeup for example I don't want to be too dark here around the under eye the lace powder is closer to being a skin tone match for me so that's something I'll put everywhere else I would say to the touch that foundation didn't leave me really feeling sticky but here's the best way to describe the feeling of the skin before it's been set it feels like you just put on a rich moisturizer that's the way the skin truly feels after that stick. So I am going to take the lace, get a little on the brush, and I'm kind of doing a little bit of a pressing motion with this, really deliberately working it into the skin everywhere, around the cheeks, around the nose, just basically everywhere where the ghost powder isn't. So that was on the under eye, this is everywhere else. Not saying everybody needs to go out and purchase two separate setting powders, but because I have them, that's going to be the difference in use. Overall, these are really finely milled powders, like they're pretty lightweight. They're not gonna look like a lot. That's what's sort of fascinating to me is that that foundation stick was so hydrating and had so much moisture to it that I can still top it off with a light amount of powder and not really look like I've got any powder on because it was able to take that on, you know? Ugh, I love makeup. I, I, I just love, you know, trying different things, figuring out how this product works with that and what you should know and everything. I love it. Next up is another new type thing that seems to be a take on like the Kim Kardashian uh, contouring set. And I've been playing with this. I'll definitely have my specific shade that I ended up with below because it's not marked on the packaging. But what you've got here is a stick that has two tones of contour. You can see one's a little bit deeper and warmer, one's lighter and cooler. And then on the highlight stick, one end is shimmery and one end is matte. Now I do know I just put some powder on here and if I'd really been thinking this through, I might not have powdered at all yet. But my powder is so lightweight and I've got that foundation stick underneath. I think everything's gonna be fine. So what I'm gonna do is actually contour a little bit with that lighter side. You can see that it's really not too dark. I'm not a huge fan of the sponge on this end, but I will use that little dense brush on the other and just kind of buff it in in circular motions. And I mean, I can't argue with that at all. It's a perfect looking contour on my skin tone. The texture of these sticks is not as creamy as the foundation stick, which I kind of like because I feel like they're still creamy enough, but I don't know that I'd want to layer up two textures of this type, one on top of the other. So it's okay for me that this feels a little drier. It's still easy enough to blend, as you can see. Then I think I'm gonna take the deeper side and I'm gonna do a little bit of that more up here around the hairline. It looks a little more bronzy. And a dense brush really can do the work quickly. So I do like that aspect here. And it does all come together as a set. I didn't purchase this stuff individually. Subtle, nice, easy. I don't really have any need to use this um, matte stick because I just feel like I am so brightened already here on the under eye. I'm, I'm smoothed out. I'm looking the way I want to look. So I'm not going to bring in that stick. But why don't I swatch them for you? Here's the one side, which would practically act as a concealer maybe on some skin tones, but it's just a brightening matte shade. And then there's a really pretty pearly highlight on the other end. I try to always swatch on the most awkward part of my hand to hold up to the camera. <laughs> Those are the same texture as like the bronzer contoury shades. And yeah, they're not a problem for me to work with at all. Moving on to one of my favorite parts, blush. If you've been watching my last few videos, you know I've kind of gotten on this kick of shimmery blushes and loving that kind of glowy but yet color infused glow right here on the cheeks. And that's kind of what's going on with this product. This is so cute. The packaging is adorable and it came in a box and within the box was a little pouch, like very high end style. It came out of a little felt pouch. That little closure there is so cute. And then it's basically blush and highlight in one. This comes in multiple shades. I have it in radiant in rose. And so what I'm gonna do here is focus my brush over here on this end, the most blushy end, and then we can just enjoy this together. Mm. 
so pretty. Seriously, have I not had some great blush finds lately? It's the kind of look that is really highlighter optional because there was so much glow in the blush. It's got an even more dewy finish to it on the skin, like these powders feel creamy when you swatch them. So there's a more dewy look on the skin than the one from Thrive that I was talking about the other day. One reason why this may not be the ideal blush for everyone is if you have a lot of visible texture and pores around your blush zone, you know, that's a situation where a matte blush might be a better option for you, something that doesn't have this much radiance involved. For me, my cheeks are kind of like my smooth spot of my face, so I really like to accent them, and I think the glowy blushes look good. And I could go right on top then and highlight further with this shade, which is intense as I'll get out. But I actually want to focus on a new highlighter product here, and this is not for highlighting sissies, okay? This is for the people who are in it to win it, like wear the boldest highlight in the room. That's what this is. These are insanely pigmented. I mean, you see them there on my fingers, and they do have this metallic twist to them. So definitely be aware of that. This isn't going to be everyone's jam. If you like the subtle barely there highlights, there are other options for you, but this is going to be the shouting from the rooftops. So I'm going to go into this peachy shade because it makes me feel a little more comfortable, but I can wear any of these. I will tell you that. And I will just go right on top of the cheekbone here. And then these are definitely highlights that I like to go over and blend in a circular motion and it works it into the skin so much more and makes it look less like I just put a streak of product on there. But they are glowy guys, like you will look absolutely dewy with this stuff on. And whereas the texture of the blush that I was describing, it felt almost creamy, like to swatch it, you feel almost like you're swatching a cream. There's a lot of somehow moisture in that powder. These are a little bit more lightweight, and dry feeling. Not in a bad way, but they're just a lighter feeling powder. They're still just as pigmented. If you're not quite as intrigued by highlighter variety and you do like the idea of a super glowy blush, you could go with this and have all your steps covered. But just be aware, like this dang thing should come with a warning. This is gonna be one of the most potent highlights you try. And I didn't even touch the white yet. Like that one's really, whew. And then you guys, I'm gonna be using my new setting spray from this brand. It's called Hyaluronic Fix. It's a hydrating and plumping makeup fixing spray and I have been loving this because I feel like it gives such a good effect with so little sprays. You don't have to spray this a dozen times to finally feel like you've got, you know, a look of moisture on your skin or that you've undone the powdery look of your makeup. I just spray it like one, two, three, four and I'm good. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. The result is so instant. It feels really good. If you try to stay away from a lot of scents in makeup, this is not an overly scented product. Um, some people feel funny. Like, I kind of like those Smashbox really scented primer waters that came out. I love those, but I can understand how some people might have the feeling like they're putting a body spray in their face, so this isn't like that. But yeah, given the foundation and the concealer and everything that I've got on, the light amount of powder, my skin comes away looking so dewy and fresh and luminous. Next up for brows, I'm going to be using a not new product, um, but it's just it's something I really like from this line. It's the Brow Pomade in Medium Brown, and it does come with the little, like, double-ended brush. It's so easy to use. It's a really good tone for my brows, and you kind of feel like you got some hold in your brows after you've put this on, actually. So I would say a setting gel is optional for me after I do this step. I haven't really looked into a lot of different Makeup Revolution brow products other than this. The only thing I can think of was something I decluttered from my collection recently, and it was a little compact that had like a wax and a few different powders, and I got rid of that because it just wasn't really my proper tone. It was too warm and my brows overall too light. But this fills in really quick. It might be starting to finally get a little bit drier on me, just the texture of the product, because I have had it a while. Oh, and for all who are wondering, I am into season three on Dawson's Creek now. Dawson is starting out wild, and he wrecked his dad's boat, threw a party at the house. But, like, I ended season two in tears. It was just an emotional basket case last night trying to watch that. So brows are done. I'm going to pop on some eye primer. I'm using my Urban Decay Anti-Aging Primer Potion today. Because that little guy got wedged down on the side, and I forgot about it. I don't have a makeup revolution eye primer at the moment. And now if for no other reason, definitely put on eye primer because it makes you go through the step of dabbing over your lid. And like I had a little foundation creased in my 
eyelid there. So you definitely want to smooth that out before you start trying to put eyeshadow on. Now, as mentioned in a previous video, one of my current favorite palettes is this Sofax Revolution Extra Spice. And yeah, we're going warm today. <laughs> I guess there are a few ways you could avoid going warm with this palette, but I think I'm going to go warm. Or I could do a little green. So many options, so little eyelid space. I think I might work in some green actually today because I've got a very intense like yellow, orange, reddish type look that I have done and I can pop up a picture of so you can sort of see what it can do on that level. But yeah, we'll work in some of the different colors today. I'm going to start with cookie dough, which is a good started out shade here for the crease. And I'm using my Sigma E25. Plus this color just reminded me that I do have cookie dough in my freezer that I could be using. Or I could slice some off and have it as a snack. I try not to do things like that anymore. I'm trying to be really disciplined about my eating, but <laughs> sounds really good. Then I think I'll do this chocolate orange color right down here. And this is a warm brownish orange mix. I guess it was well named, right? Little goes a long way. I'm just working that into the outermost corner right here. And then I'm just going to buff over that with my bare brush. And this color up here in the corner called Every Day is a really pretty, like, hint of pink infused, very brightening, shimmery shade. And I'm going to get some of that there on the inner part of my eyelid. And I'm getting a little bit of that around the tear duct also. Then let's do some of this color called Aurora, sort of an olivey shimmer. And I'm just going to pat that kind of here on the center part of my lid. Several of my warmest palettes that I own stay in a very warm place, you know, like they're orange and yellow and red and maybe some warm brown, but that's kind of where they stay. So I like that this palette actually worked in some burgundy, some green, some less typical shades, I guess, alongside, so you can do some different things. Okay, so I've got Aurora there, and then I'm going to use Lakes, which is a real, like, true olive. Like that is the look of a green olive right there. And I'll just pat that kind of on the outer part. It's matte, whereas the other green I used was shimmer. And so this I think will have a little more impact for looking darker. Okay, so we've got this nice murky green thing happening all over the lid, a little bit of a warm crease. And then I think I want to just do one more thing to amp up the crease. So I'm going to go to cheesecake right here which is a uh, rust color. And I'm going to work that into the crease, just outer corner here. That's pretty. I like that kind of accent there. And then as a highlight, I guess I'll do a little bit of everyday also, just lightly up under the brow which that little bit of glow up there now really ties in with the glowy cheek too. And friends, I think I'm just going to keep the olive theme running on the lower lash line too. So we're going to take that lakes color, the matte olive, and get that working here, starting on the outside and just sort of blend inward till there's nothing left on the brush. And then I'll pick up Aurora and use some of that on there as well. Now I'm actually going to take kind of a forest green eyeliner. This is from e.l.f. and it's called Lock On Gel Liner. This isn't my favorite liner of all time, but I'm just, I want a little green accent there in the lower inner rim. So that's where I'm putting that. Whenever I do this with a liner, I feel like I've got a true smoky vibe happening, you know? Otherwise I'll put in a real brightening liner there in the lower inner rim. Can someone tell me why I'm always losing my pencil brush? It's always the pencil brush. Oh, okay, it was in the wrong bag. All I was gonna do here was take a little bit more of the Aurora color and just go over since I did smudge a little liner down in with everything. And then one of my favorite eyeliners, love this, the Renaissance Flick from Makeup Revolution. Such an easy eyeliner to work with. It's a felt tip pen. I love the width of the product at the center. It's so easy to hold on to. I'm gonna need to buy another one of these soon though, because this is kind of like my go-to liner. And I'm just gonna go all the way across the upper lash line. And I will give it a bit of a wing today. It's black, it's matte, it's long wear, it's easy to put on. There's everything you need to know. <laughs> and then there is this color called Reputation here that's a black, it's a very rich black. And you can kind of use that blending your wing in with everything else. You know I'm a wing blender. 
I don't have any Makeup Revolution mascara or lashes, so I'm just gonna do those steps off camera real quick, and then we'll be back for the lips. So today for lashes, I'm wearing my Ardell Wispies, and I gotta tell you, I did choose to do one more thing with the eyeshadow. Sometimes after you get lashes on, you know how suddenly you feel like you need to do a little something extra with the eyeshadow? So I used some of this Running Late shade, this sort of yellowy orange up here, with my Wispy brush, and I just took that, like, right out here on the outer like zhunk, like on the outer edge of the look so it's sort of all radiating out color you know at the same time that that extra spice palette released so did several soap um, and makeup revolution lipsticks if you like the feel of the renaissance lipstick formula which i personally love i think you'll love these the shades are fudge which is a nice brownish color syrup is sort of a i don't know brownie nude and then cake has a little more pink rosiness to it i'm going to use syrup today just all over the lips. See what I mean? It's kind of like the most nude shade out of the bunch, but it's still got brown involved. But all of those lipsticks would definitely pair nicely with, you know, this palette. They're really, really creamy, comfortable lipsticks. Um, staying power is not out of this world, obviously. You know, a creamy lipstick you're going to need to reapply. But it seems like these days there are so many matte lipsticks coming out. I love that these are a nice, creamy, rich feeling formula, comfortable on the lips. And so that's syrup all over. And then I got a couple of these lip glosses from the Nudes collection. Um, this one is Exposed. This one is called Boudoir, so one is more of a brown and then this one is more rosy pink. And I gotta say, I like these a lot better than the matte liquid lipsticks from this nudes line. Unless it's a really special formula, I'm just kind of over the matte liquid lip vibe these days. But I'm gonna swatch both of these and then I think I'll put one on top. There's a little bit of sheerness with these, but overall there's like a surprising amount of color. So there's the pinky shade, there's the brownish color. I think I'm just gonna use a little bit of that brown, which again, it's called exposed. It's just kind of like this nice brownish glaze and the scent lightly sweet kind of vanilla. I would say exposed is ends up looking just a hair darker than this lipstick shade but it adds more shine to the look, as you can tell. So this is my finished look, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. I feel like Makeup Revolution is doing an awesome job with a lot of these new products that have been coming out. As you saw, I really enjoyed so much of what I was putting on. I think the thing to be aware of is your skin type. If you're going for this foundation stick and you're super oily, I think you may struggle with the staying power of it. I think dry skin can handle it. My normal skin, you know, I'm not too oily, I'm not too dry. I do need to take the extra step to make sure my skin is set all over when I use this. But the coverage level was really impressive, totally full coverage, so that was cool. You know that excites me. So then I just brought in a little bit of the Conceal and Define around the inner corner and almost preventatively around the nose because I know product can break down around the nose rather quickly, just on me, so I have the C5 shade which is always great. The contouring and highlighting sticks are actually quite nice. I found them easy to blend and work with and the tone was really nice for me. That being said, I'm not really always feeling like a heavy contour or really going to that level to do it every day. You know, to take a stick and draw it around, I'll just sometimes take a light bronzer and just keep it really soft anymore. That seems to be what I'm after. So I wouldn't say that's an essential, but you know if you like to do that on your skin. I was super impressed by the Renaissance Illuminate, the Ray Radiant in Rose blush. I thought that was gorgeous. I think the highlighters are not for the faint of heart. <laughs> like seriously, they're some of the most intense I've used. Some people are gonna love that. Some people are gonna bypass that. It's just, it's personal preference, but they do have great color payoff. Oh, also the loose powders that I use, the ghost powder and the lace powder. I have used both of those in a baking capacity plenty of times. I think they're good. They're not something where it's like, oh my gosh, this is a next level powder. It's just a good basic powder. Love, love, loving the hyaluronic fix so that pretty much covers the face stuff and then for the eyes I mean the extra spice palette is awesome I love it for the fact that it's a really warm palette and I like warm shades and it truly provides every warm shade in the book but they've kind of balanced that out with some really pretty rich shades some olive greens the berries that I love so it's warm plus more options than a lot of super warm palettes are giving us the Renaissance flick liner I almost feel like if you take nothing else from this video know that this is a tremendous, long-wearing, easy-to-apply, great, intense black liner. The Soph lipsticks, I'm gonna go ahead and swatch those for you because I don't know why I didn't do
do that earlier. The pinky one is cake. The one that I'm wearing in the middle is syrup. And then fudge is the kind of browniest one in the bunch. And I am a fan of these glosses. I will actually probably be getting some more shades of these. I have boudoir, which is the rosy one and exposed is what I put over top. It made my lip look just a little more brownie. It's a very comfortable gloss texture. They're a little bit on the sheer side, but I would say they're close to opaque. If I had to pin it down, I'd say they're like 80% opaque. But yeah, that's my look, everyone. Let me know what things you've been loving, not loving, interested in from Makeup Revolution, and I will talk to you again very soon. Bye.